I'm wondering about the opening scene here, your, your prologue, where you kind of introduce us to Desmond in Deadlock, or like I mentioned, reintroduce us if, if we've read the, the first novel. What was your goal with that scene? I mean, was it a mixture of action, voice, plot, backstory? Like, what, what were you thinking about as you were using that prologue to bring readers into the story? Very funny story. Keith Kayla read the first draft of Deadlock and then said to me, hey, I think you need a prologue back in his military days. And I was like, I've never had an editor who told me they want a prologue. I've only had editors who nixed my prologue. I said, really? <laughs> yeah, I think you do. So I said, oh, I'll do that. So having done one for the first book, I made the decision to do one for the second book out of a sense of continuity. And then that helped me establish kind of one of my rhythms that I'm going to have in these books, which is in book A, we're introduced to a character who it has a pivotal plot point in book B. So in book A, we we meet the, the young musician, the singer-songwriter, for whom he goes up to Portland to re rescue the sister. We also meet in that prologue a British spy. He's going to run into her later in this book, and then in book three as well. So I'm using the, I'm using characters I've introduced to leapfrog the stories. You don't have to read them in order, but it doesn't hurt to read them in order. There were a couple of things I need to establish in this prologue with the assumption that you had not read the first book. So I want to establish that he has this military background, that he has this technological background. He is a breach expert. He's the guy who can open any door for his unit, keep it open as long as necessary and control who does and does not go through it. That's that's what a gatekeeper is in this fictional realm I've created. He's a breach expert. So I need to wanted to establish that. Third, I want to establish that he is a jackass. He just does, he, he will make fun of authority and, and rip on people if he thinks they need to be ripped upon. And that he is capable of making very decisive decisions. And he, when necessary, he can be ruthless. Not a, he's not angsty, but he's capable of being ruthless, which was a weird juxtaposition had. So those are the things I need. I thought I thought I really need to establish in this one. I have written a prologue for the third book as well, and I'm hoping against hope that it does the same thing. It sets up who he is so I can move him into modern times. Yeah, I thought it was such an interesting, I, I thought it was just a well done move and one that I think, like you mentioned, you know, brings readers in. If you didn't read the first novel, you're right in with Des. It doesn't really matter. You get to understand his character. You know a lot about him. And it's like a really fun action sequence. And I think as readers, if you're thinking about picking up this book, if you're listening right now and you're like, this sounds like my kind of thing, like pick it up, read the prologue. You will immediately fall in love with this character and the story and you will just, you'll want to just keep reading. So yeah, I, I can't speak highly enough about it. It's funny that you mentioned about the prologues which is kind of why I wanted to ask because prologues are this really hit or miss thing. And I think it, when done well, it, it serves a function and it has to serve a function. Otherwise it's, it's cut. But I think it's just, so I, that's why I had to ask about the prologue. I was like, where was that decision happening along the way? <laughs> Keith is brilliant. Keith said, we need to know a lot about Des before he does that kidnapping scene in, in Act 1. I need we Folks need to know why why he's as good as he is in that scene. So that's why Keith wanted that. And he's just dead brilliant. 